The Last of Us Part 1 seems to be a soft remake that hopes to stay as close to the original while also updating the gameplay and visuals. I personally thought this was such a cool idea because going from The Last of Us Part 1 to The Last of Us Part 2, there's such a leap in the technology. Because I mean, like three years after the first Last of Us, Uncharted 4 was made, and that game looked absolutely breathtaking both for its time and still to this day. Thankfully, we're getting to the point that graphics are starting to slow down and fall deeper into diminishing returns. And since Uncharted 4's release, I've done nothing but wonder about what the previous Uncharted games would look like with the updated graphics. And when The Last of Us 2 came out, I had that exact same feeling. It seems that the Naughty Dog crew had the same feeling because nearly two years later, they revealed that they were remaking The Last of Us in the new Naughty Dog engine used in The Last of Us 2. It's being released for the PS5 in September and PC sometime after that. It's going to cost 70 bucks for the base game with the Left Behind DLC included. There will also be an 80 buck premium version which includes in-game buffs and cosmetics and the Firefly Edition which costs a whopping $100. There is a big argument about how this game shouldn't be 70 bucks, but before I go into the debate going on with this game, I want to talk about what this game has to offer first and foremost. To add a quick warning, I'm going to be discussing leaks and spoilers for both the first and second game, so if you haven't experienced The Last of Us Part 1 and 2, uh, I would say you should. And whether it be the original or you want to wait for the remake, it's your choice, uh, in my opinion. They're both gonna be pretty fucking good. <laughs> Looking at the first reveal trailer, we already see a massive jump in quality. Not a surprise. A lot of people say they don't see any difference, but the fact that they still hold up so many similarities just goes to show that the art direction isn't changing one bit. If anything, it's being enhanced and this remake only serves to get as close to the original vision that The Last of Us originally had. This game is not sacrificing its art direction for photorealism, but instead uses it to enhance the art direction. In some scenes, we see characters showing much more emotion than was possible with the PS3. In their faces, you can see skin deform and crease and wrinkle when making certain expressions. Nostrils flare, foreheads crease, cheeks make lines when one smiles or frowns, eyebrows furrow and cause your nose to scrunch up, muscles in the neck flex when one strains themselves. You get each and every detail that the actor made in the original performance, just cementing the emotions that each character goes through. It's okay, so no matter what, you stick to me like glue. Like glue. Like glue. Got it. Good. Good. Sarah's last scene leaked online and I couldn't help but sob again when watching it. Just because there was more than just a general emotion or expression on their face. Now you could read every thought that each character had, imagine what it's like to be in their shoes, feel what they were feeling. Tommy's expression in the original game just didn't look at all normal. He just kind of stood there. But in this remake, it, his expression just screams shock and disbelief rather than... In my honest opinion, this beats live action by a long shot. I don't think I'm ready for the emotions that this game is gonna make me feel again. Something else this game has to offer that blows the original out of the water is the environment. In The Last of Us 1, we were shown these beautiful overgrown landscapes which showed how nature just started reclaiming the cities. And the overgrown aesthetic is just so pretty. The Last of Us Part 2 took that same exact environment, cranked the knob and ripped it out, showing how certain places in Seattle which suffered bombing in the earlier years of the infection slowly eroded and turned into rolling hills and grew tons of thick green grass. It was absolutely beautiful and solidified the overgrown aesthetic that The Last of Us is just so well known for. This remake comes along and not only do we get to see these beautiful environments again in the new Naughty Dog engine,
but we see extra emphasis and detail put into the amount of vegetation that these environments inhabit, making them thick with weeds, vines, grasses, bushes, trees, and pools of stagnant water covered in moss. However, these environments don't just serve as pretty backdrops. They also change and deform as we venture through them, with physics objects everywhere being able to fly with explosions and gunfire, particle simulations and dynamic destruction are going to make playing through these spaces feel much more grounded with glass windows shattering, cover getting chipped away with gunfire and explosions, and unsecured objects being thrown about as the fight rages on. However, the one thing that makes or breaks all games, pretty visuals, dynamic environments, or not, is the gameplay. Gameplay is king. Even if a game is pretty, those visuals cannot make up for it. clunky, awkward controls or unrewarding game mechanics. This is why games like Half-Life 1 and 2 still feel incredible to play, even though they came out in 1998 and 2004 respectively. So where does The Last of Us 1's gameplay sit? It's a mixed bag. It's smooth enough to still be played with relative ease, but it lacks the polish that future Naughty Dog games such as Uncharted 4 and The Last of Us Part 2 have. Don't get me wrong, it's responsive alright, and you can make out alright enough. But there's nothing else there to make the experience as buttery smooth like the future Naughty Dog games. Even for the time, the game played quite awkwardly, but that's because Naughty Dog's movement mechanics were still stuck in the Uncharted franchise. The Last of Us 2 made the movement and controls buttery smooth, allowing people to really hone in the controls and make gameplay look effortless. It doesn't take that much skill to be decent at The Last of Us 2, but if you took your time to really familiarize yourself with the controls and think critically about your movements and actions, you could honestly play it more like Doom Eternal. You can constantly swap weapons and pick up objects to take out your enemies in a swift and brutal fashion while constantly moving, whereas The Last of Us 1 lent itself to that hunker down and take your shots carefully approach, which still works in the second game. You can still take that approach. By giving the first game this treatment though, you can essentially become Joel Wake and dispatch hunters and officers with skillful ease, combining stealth and combat to create the most deadly mixture of anxious silence and chaos. However, as shown in gameplay leaks that just went live before the gameplay presentation came out, not all the same movement mechanics are coming to The Last of Us Part 1. Dodging, jumping, and crawling are all being excluded from this remake, and unless they add it at the last second, I don't, I don't see them changing it. And as buttery smooth as the controls may be in this remake, it still feels outdated when compared to the second game. I really wish we could at least keep dodging as that added an extra skill element to be mastered, and it made dealing with clickers so much easier because you could literally just... But without all of these extra mechanics, I don't see what the modernized gameplay promises entails. Again, it's still an early version of the build, so by all means, we could see the implementation later on just before release, but I'm not going to hold my breath for it. I'm just going to say, we should wait until the game releases and people start reviewing the game, because it's, it's not all that uncommon for people to just misadvertise their games and overpromise. We also get to see what combat might play like in certain areas, such as the first hunter ambush and the encounter in the library. We do see reused animations and assets of which I hope are just placeholders. They also talk about haptic feedback, responsive triggers, and the in-control speakers and the like, but for gameplay, all we really have are better AI and smoother controls. Without changing much from the first and not adding any new mechanics from the second, I can't help but be a little skeptical as to how this game is going to play out. Now, let's talk about price. Finally. <laughs> the Last of Us' fandom, and for the most part, all of the Naughty Dog fandom, seems to be extremely divided by whether or not this game is worth the $70 price tag. Or even if it's worth existing. Some people say, like, this game just shouldn't exist. It isn't worth making. When you factor in sales, which is the way I get most of my games anyway, I'm poor. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's gonna be worth it for me. I'm gonna be waiting for this game to go down to around 40 bucks. And if you are skeptical about this game, I say you should just do the same. One thing people seem to ignore a lot when criticizing the price point 
is that this game is also coming to PC sometime after its initial release. This leads Naughty Dog to have a weird stance on what the price should be. On one hand, this game has already been released on PS3 and remastered for the PS4, so the price should be somewhere in the 40s. On the other hand, this game is coming to the PC market and it's completely new, which leads them to want to release it for the full price, 70 bucks. Yes, 70 bucks is going to be the new norm for video games, but I personally don't see an issue because I get all my games cheaper anyway. <laughs> Getting games on sale is not that hard, so I don't have shit to say. So, Naughty Dog and Sony have to choose between a full price game or a discounted price. So, Sony takes the greedier price and releases it for 70 bucks. I would much prefer some sort of compromise. For an example, for people who already own the original and or remaster, give them a discount. Like, Maybe half off, maybe make it 40 for them and 70 for everyone else. Or maybe make the price somewhere in the middle, like 50 or 60. But at the end of the day, we, we can't change the price of this game. We can only put our money where our mouths is and buy what we support. A lot of other people like to say this is a remaster of a remaster, but I think labeling this as a true remaster is a little more fitting in my eyes. My issue with The Last of Us Part 1 isn't that I think it's a bad remake, it's that I don't think it's a remake. I think it's a remaster. But the thing is, the actual remaster was just the same game, with like two extra features. If The Last of Us Remastered never existed and the Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection was free, or at least discounted for those who owned the games on PS4, I don't think anyone would have an issue with this remake coming out. But Naughty Dog have set themselves a reputation of porting games to the next gen with a full price tag on them and minimal changes. One thing I can say though, The Last of Us Part 1 is gonna be different. I can feel it. Looking at these additions, I can clearly see that a lot of love went into remaking this game and I can't help but get excited. I know this is gonna be good and for first time players, it's gonna be absolutely phenomenal. I was only able to play The Last of Us Part 1 and 2 because one of my friends let me play his PS4 one day and I played a bit of both. But I never experienced these stories in full, first hand, only through the eyes of others. From YouTubers like Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, Berlizzi, and Queen Tofu. This will be the first time I experienced this game. First hand, front to back, and I'm very excited. <laughs> There's going to be links to some videos down in the description who are 10 times better at this than me. This was my first attempt at something like this, so please go, please go easy on me. <laughs> Their videos helped me take this whole situation into perspective and uh, whether or not I should be looking forward to it or dreading it. To those who can't wait for this game to come out, I'm right there with you. To those who are still skeptical, don't buy the game day one, look closely at reviews, and wait for a discount, like me. To those who blindly hate anything Naughty Dog and Sony do nowadays, keep that energy away from me. Because I actually prefer to enjoy things. And as much as I wish this game could be more, I choose to be positive. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, leave a like if you found this video enjoyable or informative or useful or enlightening any of those and let me know down in the comments uh, whether or not you're gonna get this remake or if you're gonna stick to the original I don't blame you if you're gonna stick to the original original is still fucking good <laughs> and also let me know if I missed anything again this I typed this up in like a day I've been sitting on like a separate script for I think a month now but this is my final draft that I just Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this video, and uh, have a good day.